right, today we find ourselves in chapter 1, section 2. Um, this is the fourth part of the lecture. And what we're going to be talking today about is consumer rights and responsibilities. Uh, when we go out to buy things, we have certain expectations. The same way as business owners have expectations of customers. And that deals with the whole concept of consumerism. And what consumerism is a social movement aimed at promoting the interests of consumers. Meaning, how do we protect the consumers so that they can go out and do things without having to investigate um, every aspect of their purchase? The whole concept comes from the idea of due diligence, which means that, did I do everything to educate myself properly when I make a decision? And with consumerism, what the government decided to do was to step in to make sure that we had a little bit more of a cushion, meaning that there's going to be some oversight into what's happening to make sure that we're safe or, or we're represented in this idea. It comes back from the 1960s under President John F. Kennedy. And what Kennedy does is he sends a message to Congress and he outlines the first four consumer rights that we're going to talk about in just a second. He thought it was critical with the, the, the way that the progress was happening in consumerism that we had the ability, while the, the companies were creating stronger and more profitable businesses, that they didn't cut corners. So they kept the, the consumer safe in different ways. Later on, Richard Nixon is going to add another part uh, to this whole concept. So the first right is the right to safety. And that's truly just protection against goods that are dangerous to life and health. Meaning that when we look at toys, or, uh, for instance, we want to make sure that they're made with products that are not going to be dangerous to the health of a child. Thinking about before the 1960s when toys were made with lead, we now know lead could cause cancer, so that's not a smart move. So the government is able to say, we're going to regulate part of the business to make sure that there are certain things that are expected when we're producing a product. The second concept is the right to be informed. And that's to receive information that can be used for reasons, choices, um, and protection against fraud. Meaning that if I advertise a product, let's say, for instance, a, a vitamin that's going to make you skinny, the government has to be able to step in and say, we need to protect people from making bad decisions. And we need to make sure that some things are regulated and some things are warned. Meaning that you could decide to buy that vitamin as long as it doesn't hurt you, but we need to be able to tell the people, that are consumers, that this product might not work as advertised. And it's up to you to make that decision afterwards. The next concept is the right to choose. And that's the right to be protected in the markets where competition may not always exist. Think about it from the perspective of us living in a very rural community. The government has to set some ceilings on prices to make sure that we don't get gouged. Uh, look at gasoline, for instance. You know, when you drive to Slippery Rock or to Edmonton, the prices are a little bit cheaper. When we're in our local community, when you look at these gas stations, typically the prices are a lot higher because of the rural availability there is going to be a need for that gas in the area, so the person who's able to produce that good decides that they're going to raise the price to make a little bit more profit. Imagine if there was no regulations, how high would those prices go? The same thing when you look about choice, you know, if you go to Walmart versus Giant Eagle. When you go to those different stores, those prices are competitive to each other, meaning that if there was only one store and with no competition, one of the industries could raise their prices so high and it would actually have an effect on you, the consumer. You also have a right to be heard. And that is a guarantee that consumer interest will consider, be considered whenever laws are being written. Meaning that no matter what happens, the, the Congress is going to be able to think about what, is going to ha how, what type of effect it's going to have on you and me, the consumers, whenever we make these decisions and these laws. And finally, the right to redress. And that's the ability of consumers to receive adequate payment from producers if they are harmed by their product. Meaning if you buy something that doesn't have a warning label, and you use it as directed, and it has an, an adverse effect on your health, uh, physical, mental, uh, what are your repercussions? Meaning that we have the right to sue those companies for manufacturer's defects or things of that nature. From the other side, though, too, we also have responsibilities and consumers. What do we need to do to make sure that we're making the best decisions for ourselves and for our household? And some of the responsibilities of the consumer aren't so straightforward. But these are some uh, tips that we could use to try to make decisions about the future. 
first thing it says is to include important details and copies of receipts, guarantees, and contracts to support your case. When you make a large uh, purchase, like a car or, or an appliance, it's really smart that you keep the booklet or the uh, informational materials that come with or accompany with. Um, that could be stuff like the warranty or the receipt itself to make sure that if something happens or something breaks, you are covered or you have proof of purchase. The next thing you need to do is report, report a problem immediately. Do not try to fix the problem yourself because doing so may cancel the warranty. I think about you know, the ice box in the freezer. Uh, if your freezer makes ice, sometimes you know, it will jam up. If you go in and try to fix it yourself, typically what will happen is it might work for the short term, but if they have to eventually call a repair person in to do that work, they might see that you have caused some kind of undue harm or undue hardship to that machine, and it might void the warranty overall. So if you need to contact the manufacturer, do it in writing. Uh, type a letter or send an email directly, and keep a copy so that you have evidence to show that you tried to make the communication. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see that warranties have a time limit, so making this contact and keeping you know, the, the records uh, the documentation about their contact is, might be helpful in the future in case there's type of dispute. The next thing is keep cool. The person you're, um, who you will help have solve your problem is probably not the person responsible for your problem or not the person causing it. You know, you can't get mad at somebody or over the phone or even in person if they're not the person who directly did that. So make sure that you're cold, calm, and collected whenever you're dealing with the customer service person um, about the or purchase or something that's wrong. Last thing is keep accurate records of, of efforts that, that you use to get the problem solved. Include the names of people you spoke to or write them down and the dates in which you communicated. So for instance, if you're having a problem with your refrigerator and you call in for a warranty repair, make sure you document the day and time you called, the salesperson you talked to, and what was the uh, summary of the conversation. This might come back to help you out in the future.